We've got more news to get to here on the show. We're going to talk about what's going on up in the Cana uh, Canadian uh, Canadian trucker convoy. Uh, SWAT teams move in and money being withheld. We're going to get to that in just a second. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at Moomoo. Smart trading anytime, anywhere. And you can get up to $7,000 in free stock right now, plus a free AMC stock by using the Moomoo platform. It's very easy to use. It's very clean and easy. You can see here on your screen that you can use it on an iPhone, a tablet, your desktop computer, and you can trade anytime, anywhere with zero commissions. You don't have to pay any commissions to these guys. You can invest in U.S. stocks, ETFs, anything you want right there inside of Moomoo. So here's what you do. You go to morninginvest.com slash Moomoo. That's M-O-O-M-O-O. -O -O -O, and they're going to give you, first of all, when you get free stocks just for signing up. And then when you make an initial deposit, you get additional free stocks. On top of that, they're giving away free AMC stock. And you have a chance to get up to $7,000 in stocks just for signing up. Very simple to use. Just go to morninginvest.com slash Moomoo. It's my favorite play trading platform of choice. Plus, you get all kinds of news, 24-7 financial news right side inside of the app. And you have a global investment community that teaches you. You can learn from 15 million users worldwide to unlock the power of trading. So morninginvest.com slash Moomoo is the place to go. Check it out today. Well, in Canada, GoFundMe executives are being asked how they are going to account for the over $10 million in donations that were sent towards the Canadian truck envoy that was created to protest vaccine mandates, not vaccines but vaccine mandates. Uh, this GoFundMe page has been put on hold after it hit $10 million. And now the House of Commons Public Safety and National Security Committee is asking GoFundMe to tell them what safeguards it has in place when it comes to releasing those funds for the trucker convoy. This is outrageous. What safety protocols are in place? What do they mean? Well, specifically, they are saying the Canadian government has said this is was a fringe movement, and they have also said that it was a veil for certain extremists and white supremacists, okay. when for the most part, the people who spoke on behalf of it said, we are just speaking out for the freedom of our truckers to have the choice to take the vaccine or not without losing their livelihood. Uh, but... Canada continues to say, well, this is these are extremist groups using this as a veil for their own movement. So they also want an accounting for the $1 million that has already been distributed to the GoFundMe organizers, which they say was for fuel, food, and lodging costs for the truckers that took part. Now, if you know anything about how truckers' lives run, you know that they are always a dollar short. Always, even when they get to their final job, they get their final paycheck when they deliver their uh, cans of whipped cream, right, to a distribution center. They still have to wait in long lines. They still have to pay their fuel and insurance. They are almost always behind. So for them to take time out of their schedule and do this, they will be behind immediately from the, from the moment they make that decision. Um, and so this GoFundMe was to help them pay for food and fuel. The lawyer for the organization, Keith Wilson, who was representing the truckers, said that there has been steps to establish a proper accounting. And in fact, that, you know, the problem with GoFundMe is it's not an actual charity, despite the fact that when you click on it, usually it's like so-and-so's family has had this hardship. So-and-so's business has had this hardship. Please donate. Right. But it's not a real tax deductible charity. And so whoever takes that money can, in fact, be taxed on it heavily. So if they had not already had a plan in place to funnel that money down to the truckers, then somebody was going to have a high tax bill. It would only be prudent to do that. And this lawyer, Keith Wilson, says all of the funds that have not yet made it to the bank account are being held um, into the trust for the benefit of the movement, and they have an accountant involved and lawyers. There's audit procedures and so on, which will allow GoFundMe to flow the funds that so many have donated. Um, so they say this is on the up and up, what, whatever the Canadian government wants you to think or not. Um, they're saying that now you cannot donate to this GoFundMe page. It's paused, and GoFundMe says our lawyers are taking a look. We're trying to make sure that it's all on the up and up. This is not usually what GoFundMe does. They don't get involved in picking sides. And it's interesting that they preemptively picked a side before they were asked to testify in front of the Canadian government. 
Right. And so shortly before the publication, I mean, GoFundMe announced that this campaign, like when this information was coming out, GoFundMe announced the campaign is paused, currently under review, and that it's going to comply with this, uh, th with its terms of service. Nonetheless, $1 million has already been distributed. Um, and other related campaigns are still up and running. So are they violating their own terms of service by allowing the money to all have already been distributed? Like what, wh where, what pressure was put upon GoFundMe to suddenly take a look at this when they already have separate things that are up and running on their website? So they, it's a, to me, it's a big bowl of hypocrisy. The crowdfunding success has already been covered. Like the media has been covering this for weeks about the crowdfunding that's yes. already been in place for this. So now they're gonna check it out Right. Now they're going to check it out because the Canadian MPs put pressure on them for this. Um, and so then should every GoFundMe page be, you know, a, a lot of times you, you hear media stories about how GoFundMe pages were used in some kind of inappropriate way. So now are they going to take responsibility for that? Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, GoFundMe could say that, that it wants to be neutral, right? It wants to be neutral here and how the money is raised on its platform. Uh, it, it does not, you know, we have no involvement in how the money is raised or how it's distributed. You're simply using our platform regardless of your political views. But now GoFundMe and other crowd, uh, crowdfunding platforms, you know, they're, they're regularly, we've heard this over the past few weeks, they're regularly sticking their neck in now on certain campaigns and banning certain things because it violates their terms of service, right? Didn't we see, I think the My Pillow guy, I mean, there's a, there's a bunch of stuff where they're now sticking their neck into political things to say that this is a violation of our terms of service because we don't agree with your politics at the end yes. of the day. Yes. Uh, there was a woman who spoke out against the George Floyd protests and said that she didn't think George Floyd was a hero. And then that sort of sunk her business and they took her, um, GoFundMe page off because they didn't like what she said. Uh, again, I, I don't necessarily like what she said either, but in America, you have the right to say things that other people don't like. Does that mean then you don't also have the right to certain um, web services because of that, right? Uh, it's an interesting question that I don't think we should have a knee-jerk reaction to because if GoFundMe preemptively did this, they say, they're they saying they will cooperate with the Canadian government to give them a proper accounting um, but then again, every GoFundMe page should have a proper accounting because uh, these are high tax, high tax nations, right? You can't just give someone money without a tax trail. And so that should just be a given that, that this happens, right? Yeah. And then on the other side of this, and I'm not saying that this is the case, but on the other side of this argument are those people that say that this whole convoy is full of white supremacists. They have swastikas and... Um, and there's been there's been criticism of media for ignoring like there's a sweatshirts and hoodies that show um, Trudeau with like a noose around his neck and things like that. Uh, people ignoring that, saying in news reports like, hey, you know, you should be showing this stuff. You should be showing the swastikas. You should be showing the QAnon comments and the white supremacist comments that are showing up on uh, GoFundMe's website. Why are you ignoring this? So there are there are those on the other side saying, hey, if you go to the GoFundMe page for this, you'll see all sorts of conspiracy theories and QAnon comments and swastikas and all of this stuff. So again. But should you be able to support the movement and also support fringe movements and donate? Right. Yes. Right. And sure. Is it fringe when you have tens of thousands of, of people who are taking to the streets to say that we, you know, yes, you you can it's fringe. You can believe that I don't know some that JFK Jr. is going to be Trump's running mate in 2024, right? And also be against vaccine mandates. Both things can be true, right? Yeah. So can you then parse out my donation? Like I give you a dollar. And I believe these things, that vaccines should not be mandated and that JFK Jr. is alive. Um, so then should only 50 cents a my dollar go to the campaign because I also am fringe? Right. I mean, and, you know, again, so should and are there a few rotten apples that are always going to spoil a bunch? So I'm sure if you look through anything, you're going to find people that have maybe crazy out there beliefs. So you have like the anti-hate.ca website and their group saying, hey, this freedom convoy is nothing but a vehicle of the far right. You know, it's just all it is, just white supremacists, right? They have a whole blog post and website devoted to it. 
Um, they say that they've raised six million dollars, but if you look at its organizers and promoters, you'll find Islamis, uh, Islamophobia, anti-Semitism, racism, and incitements to violence. So, are you painting this entire movement because of a few individuals? Um, you know, is that how you're trying to paint this? And then, then it gets them off the hook for yeah. calling this a legitimate cause. You know, just think more critically about this stuff. But again, you know, should fa should GoFundMe be able to pick these sort of winners and losers in this situation? Well, I guess they are because that's what they're doing right well, now. Well, we don't know. Um, and, and it could be that after a proper accounting, this money does, in fact, go to people who have legitimate fuel receipts, right? Right. Um, but can you not get a fuel receipt if you are a swastika tattooed person, but you were, in fact, protesting van vaccine mandates? Right. Is it up for GoFundMe to decide how you, f I mean, yeah. Like, what if you are someone who's like, yes, I do have white supremacy views. That's allowed, right? Of yes, course it's allowed. It's allowed. Uh, but I do also, I, I caused no problems. I do think that vaccine mandates hurts my brethren and I don't want anything to do with it. So I came here to support it. I have a legitimate fuel receipt, but I do also have a swastika but I'm tattoo. Also, but I'm also racist. Like, <laughs> like can that's... that person not participate? Do you preclude yourself from, and I, I don't know the answer to it. It's like, an I don't interesting like your, question. Yeah, I don't like your views. You are, you're a Trump supporter. You, you know, you're a skinhead. You're a skinhead. You know. You're a white supremacist. Uh, but so you, then you don't get any other views at all. We we throw the baby out with the with the racist bathwater. Right. You're anti-Semitic. Therefore, you don't get gas. We can't pay your gas. Like we need to we need to run down your laundry list of political views. I know we're being extreme here. But who, where does the extreme part stop? You know, again, when it comes to some, when it, we see what the Democratic Party does to the Green Party, yeah. you know, I mean, so you don't have, it doesn't have to be extreme. We don't have to be talking about white supremacy here for political groups to have their day and to push other political groups and other, other viewpoints away. It happens all the time. So let us know your thoughts in the comments below on that story. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Also, we have a membership program for the price of a cup of coffee once a month. You can support independent journalism just by going to morninginvest.com slash join. You get access to exclusive videos, plus the ability to join and chat with us live. We really appreciate your subscription and you are supporting independent journalism.